chapter five, the first chapter on uh, macroeconomics. The first section I'm going to go through with you guys here is on gross domestic product. So you can follow through in the slides. Gross domestic product is the measure of uh, total income of a nation. So essentially what we're saying here is that the market value, uh, we're calculating the market value of all final goods and services uh, produced in a given time frame in a given country. So here, if you think about that, it, if we have people that go to other countries uh, to um, work uh, and produce or set up a firm in another country, well, that doesn't count as part of GDP. But if another country comes to Canada and produces goods in Canada, well, that would be part of gross domestic product. So it's the total value of goods and services produced in a country in a given period of time. Because it's seen as a, a measure of uh, overall economic performance, uh, it's used to uh, as an objective to, to promote, to try to grow uh, gross domestic product uh, to keep on improving. So different measures to calculate uh, gross domestic product. We have the income approach, the expenditure approach, and the value added approach. Um, we'll see that they're all the same. They all calculate it the same way, but the one that we're really going to focus on in this class, the simplest one, is the expenditure approach. How we could see that they're the same, at least the first two, is by looking at this circular flow diagram. So in this diagram here, I don't expect you guys to know all of the little links. The big idea here is that every time you buy someone, uh, not buy someone, you can buy something or buy someone's services, uh, but every time you buy something, so someone's purchase or his, we can say his expense, is someone else's revenue. Okay. So if we look at uh, adding up all the expense amounts or adding up all the revenue amounts, it essentially amounts to the same thing. It amounts to the same uh, value in both cases. So therefore, it doesn't really matter uh, whether you calculate it from an expense approach or from a, an income approach. So we could either add all components of income or add all dollar figures of all the goods and services produced. So this is what we're going to uh, discuss here. Okay. And an important issue in calculating GDP is to avoid double counting. The expenditure approach to calculate GDP does not count the sale of intermediate goods. Intermediate goods uh, being goods and services that are completely used up in the production of some final goods and services. Note that except uh, we do count intermediate goods when we're talking about goods that are added to a firm's inventory to be used at or sold at a later date. So essentially here what we're trying to say is, let's say you're producing tables and you have a certain amount of wood. Uh, to, you have uh, certain pieces of wood and, and uh, metal and other things like that to produce a table. Well, if you were to add up all of that wood and all of that steel and then add up the value of the table, you'd be double counting. You'd be overstating uh, the value of the actual products produced. You should only count the value of the final good produced. However, uh, if that wood is purchased by a consumer and he makes his table himself, well, then it counts because that's a final good for this person. It wasn't used in the production process uh, by a specific firm that then sells something else. So that's one exception. Also, the other exception is sometimes in a given year, there might be a lot of wood that's being produced, but it hasn't been converted to tables yet. So that would be kind of like uh, adding up some inventory of this wood, uh, this inventory kind of investment. So this would actually count as part of GDP, but in, in the inventory investment category. So... Um, if it's something that was produced and used up uh, in the production process and that good it has been produced in that given year, well, that intermediate good should never be counted. Otherwise, it's double counting. The other way of seeing it is 
if we look at uh, the value added approach. So if I think of the many stages in the production of bread, well, I could, eat if, if, uh, I could start off with a, a farmer, or whatever you want to call him, who produces the flour, or not even the flour, he produces the wheat. And to produce uh, bread or something, the, the, the value of wheat that he produces, he sells it uh, for six, uh, 10 cents to uh, someone who's going to pl produce flour. So then you have like in one of these big flour companies. So the farmer produces wheat. Then you have like a flour company who produces flour. That flour he produces, now he sells it for, let's say, 40 cents. And then you could have many other steps, but let's just go rapidly. Then you have a baker or a bread producer who now produces bread. And that loaf of bread is selling for $3. Well, if we were to add up all of these components here, we would say, well, in this time frame, we've produced $3.50 worth of goods and services. Well, that's false because... Um, these people are not producing an extra 40 cents or an extra three dollars they're taking a certain value and they're adding something to it so this first person took something that had let's say a zero value and added 10 cents to it the second company added 30 cents it took something that had 10 cents of value added 30 cents and this third guy added two dollars sixty if I were to add up all of these extra value added in each of the steps of the process, I would see that I have a total value of $3, which is essentially my um, the same as the value of the final good produce. Otherwise, if I were to add an extra person here that's in between the guy who produces the flour and the baker, and he's like at a dollar or something else, well, if I were to add all of these steps, the same loaf of bread would seem to have more value, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, you wanna make sure that um, if you're producing a, a given good, whether you have more players in the production process or one company that um, gets the wheat, then it produces the flour and then produces the bread. If it's the same product produced at the end of the day and it's the same kind of attributes and everything else, it should produce and um, create the same impact on GDP. So if we were to add all steps, the intermediate goods, we'd have too much value. Something we want to avoid. So how do we do it during, with the expenditure approach? Um, so this is the one slide and that you'll want to make sure that you understand really well because you'll have to calculate it again and understand all of this because it's going to help you out later on when we talk about aggregate demand. So you want to make sure that you understand what each of these components are and I'll kind of uh, highlight some of the difficulties with uh, some of these components in this process. So uh, consumption is just all goods and services produce, purchased by consumers. Um, so you could be thinking, let's I'll throw a curveball right away for you guys. If you're thinking, well, what about imports? Um, well, yes, that, let's say you buy $5 worth of imports, that would count here in consumption. The thing is, is those imports would also count in this section over here. And imports are, have a negative sign in front. So this $5 that contributes here and contributes there essentially cancels out. And it makes sense that they would cancel out because if you buy more imported goods, you're not buying domestically produced goods. It's not saying that we've produced more in a given time frame in a country. So if you're borrowing to buy imported products, you're not contributing to a gross domestic product. So consumption, all goods and services. Um, I'll just skip investment for a second. Government spending is uh, gov goods and services purchased by the government. Includes salaries, but not employment insurance benef uh, benefits or payments. So it's anything that they get uh, something in exchange. Because otherwise, if we think about EI or other kind of uh, payments that they may give, it's really just a transfer of money. It's as if your parents gave you $1,000. Well, this $1,000 that they give you or the government that gives you money, uh, it's just a transfer. It doesn't really relate to something being produced. But when they pay for someone's salary, uh, such as a judge or something else, um, uh, they're essentially getting a service. So there's something being produced. And the thing with GDP, it's gross domestic product, but goods and services are also included. Uh, net exports, total exports minus total imports. 
which will lead to our trade balance discussion later on. And now for the most complicated one uh, for some people, investment. So for investment, the big thing I want you guys to avoid is don't think about this as buying stocks and bonds. Okay, we're not talking about uh, investment in the form of um, buying financial assets. We're thinking about it as you're building a new uh, factory. You're buying equipment such as a, an excavator, a printer, a computer, or anything else for your business. That's investing. You're investing in your business. New residential structure counts as well. Uh, so any new house that's being produced counts uh, because it's a new building. Uh, it might not be a factory, but it's still a new building. Um, <clears throat> if it's a used house, it's just a transfer in ownership, of ownership. Um, and inventory investment is uh, included in there. And we kind of talked about inventory investment just a second ago. So if you accumulate a certain level of inventory, that counts as part of GDP. Some people ask, well, if you accumulate that inventory and you sell it the next year, what's going to happen? Well, your inventory investment is going to go down and your selling or consumption is going to go up. They might not have the exact same value, uh, but it's going to kind of cancel off uh, to a certain extent because if you're producing a bunch of computers in a given year, but you're only selling it the next year, you really want them to contribute to GDP in the year that they were produced, not necessarily in, in the year that they were sold. So it's that counterbalancing of inventory investment going down and consumption going up that will uh, lead to this uh, story. So that's it for uh, the, the main points of the expenditure approach. Make sure that you go through some of these because uh, some of it might complicate you. So I might have a, another short video going over some of it as well.